make this little ornament, you're gonna need some specific supplies. You definitely need to go get the pattern from the pincutsostudio.com website. You're gonna need some wool felt. Wool felt wears a little bit nicer than regular felt. It doesn't pill and it just has a really pretty texture, but regular felt will work too. So I've cut here two um, pieces of felt. They don't have to be different. They can be the same, but you need two out of this pattern piece. Then you're gonna need a novelty print. I have these cute little dogs. So I'm gonna use the wiener dog this time. Um, you just need to make sure that your picture fits inside of the other pattern piece. And then you're gonna also need a big enough piece of clear vinyl for the snow globe part. You're gonna need a piece of tissue paper for sewing on the vinyl that will tear off later. And you will need fusible web. This sticks, this pretty much turns this dog into a sticker that I can then stick onto my fabric with my iron. It has this bumpy side on one side. You're also gonna need some glitter. I have this like flat shaped glitter from Hobby Lobby. It came in three colors, super cheap. It was half off, so I got all these for $1.50. Um, I would stay away from the little ball-y snowball things because I think they would just static cling to the inside of your snow globe. Okay, so I think that's everything other than your basic sewing tools. So you can see I already cut out my base. I think I'm gonna use the gray again for the background and use the green for the backing. Basically you want a backing not only to make it stiffer but to hide all your stitching that's going on underneath there. So I'm going to take a scrap of my fusible web, big enough for this wiener dog, and I'm gonna go iron it on to my wiener dog, bumpy side down. I'm also wanting to include this from Santa Paws tag, so I'm gonna do both. So I'm gonna go press that on really good. Okay, see how I iron that onto the back of my print? And then I'm going to cut out carefully around him on the front. I'm going to leave about an eighth an inch of the little blue border. Cut his cute little scarf. Doesn't need to be perfect because you're gonna sew around it. So he barely fits, but I think we can make it work. Okay, I think that actually works better because my dog is kind of large. I think if I bury him partially under the snow, that's going to work. So I'm actually going to snip off his bottom feet. If I place him there, then that will be pretty cute. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is peel the backing off my dog. And to do this, my favorite method is to tear in the center and then I can usually get under there and start tearing it off. You just want to make sure the sticky part is staying, is sticking on your fabric. Okay, went ahead and snipped his tail off too. Eek. From Santa Paws. I don't know if I really need this. I might leave that out. Okay, you can see I've started arranging my scene. I haven't pressed anything down yet. They still have the sticky back, but I wanted to put this trim behind the dog. My little Santa Paws tag I thought was too big. So I decided on some trim instead and I buried my little dog in the snow using the snow pattern piece. Um, the fusible web also works on the fleece. So I'm also going to cut out my base out of this pattern piece, out of this plaid fabric. So you do this the same way, but this time, since you're not just cutting out an already printed doggy, you're gonna have to trace your pattern piece. And then remember to iron it onto the back of your fabric. And you just cut it out. And part of the purpose of the snow piece is to hide the base, the raw edge at the top of the base. Okay, so let me place that there underneath my snow. Now I think, I think that's how I want it. 
So I'm gonna go iron all of this down onto my felt piece. Okay, so that's all stuck now. I didn't stick my snow yet because I actually want to sew around my dog first. See how I sewed around him here? This kind of is an optional step. He'll stick just fine, but I just think it makes it look cute. Adds a little something extra. So I'm gonna use black thread and just sew roughly around my dog. And then I'm going to um, not sew my fleece. I'm just gonna stick that down. I'm also going to sew around this. I can do that now or I can wait till later. Doesn't matter, either one. Okay, I have my snow globe scene made. Very cute so far. Going to trim that. Trim that. Okay, the next step is to cut out a circle out of your vinyl. I already cut a piece of vinyl, I can't find it. So using your circle pattern, don't put pins in it. The holes will be permanent, so just cut it out as carefully as you can. We're gonna sew this on all the way around, but there's a trick to this. If you just try to sew it on with your regular sewing machine foot, the foot will stick to it and you'll be frustrated. Okay, so I have my circle cut out of the clear vinyl and I'm gonna go sew this on, but I'm going to leave a small gap to put my glitter in. Um, the trick to sewing vinyl, because if you try to sew this on with your regular presser foot, especially because you can't pin it, um, it's gonna stick to it and just get bunched up and you'll be frustrated. So, unless you have a Teflon foot, which I do not, I put a piece of tissue paper over it. And then I just go ahead and sew it on. The tissue paper tears away later. But don't forget to leave a tiny gap. Okay, you should be able to see through that just enough. But if you can't, you could always use wax paper. Also, your circle doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna go around it again and it's supposed to look deliberately off, if that makes sense. Gives it kind of a folksy look. Okay, so now you're gonna put your glitter in and I made this tiny paper funnel. Where did I put it? I found it. So I made this tiny paper funnel. I'm going to slip that in my gap in between my vinyl and my felt. Just gonna put in a little bit of glitter. This is a mess because this packaging had a hole in it. Okay, let's see how that looks once I get it in there. Okay, I can see that that's enough. It really does not take very much. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and close up this gap and I'm actually gonna go around again. Okay, now you can just simply tear away your tissue paper. Okay, make sure you get all those little bits. Make sure your vinyl is sewn down. No holes. Okay, so far so good. Now you have some options for the backing. You could just glue it on um, with fabric friendly craft glue and that would work just fine I would not put glue up here because that might not help your grommet go through you can maybe blanket stitch it around you could add it to the back before you did this other layer and then you could do another row of stitching here that's what I did on this one look he still has tissue paper huh. okay so I think I'm just gonna put another row all the way around of stitching that'll be the easiest for this Okay, it's looking so cute. All right, all I have to do is add the grommet. I mean the eyelet, what do you call that? I've been calling it a grommet this whole time. Okay, so when you buy eyelets, some of the times they come with this little tool and you just hammer it in, but you have to cut a hole and that's kind of, that's kind of a pain. So I have this spring-loaded eyelet setter. I use this thing all the time. I'll put the link in the comments below because I even use this to punch extra holes in belts. So 
um, the thing is really handy and you don't have to, you know how with a hole punch, if you're trying to punch a hole like here, you can't do that. So this, this comes in handy all the time. It comes in a three pack, three different sizes. So I'm going to use my little eyelet. I'm just going to put this here and it's spring loaded. So just a couple of pops. I know that was loud. Okay, so there I have a nice neat hole. Now I just put this here, turn it over, use the other side to put it here and do the same thing. And it flattens it right out. Pretty handy tool. Okay, and then all I need to do is add ribbon, which I have right here. There we go. To keep my ribbon ends from fraying, I'm gonna put some fray check on there. I will link to this down there also. And there you have it. I've made two of these so far. I actually have an extensive post on my blog about all the ornaments I've batch sewn for my friends over the years. So if you need some ideas that for that, just hop over there, pincutsostudio.com. And if you make some of these, I'd love you to find me on Instagram and show me. So cheers.